Coming up on Doctype, I'll show you how to bring some animation to your site using CSS3 transitions. Then, Jim will show you how to use the CSS method in jQuery. So herpity derp derp derp, because it's time for derp type. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that's absolutely terrified of code, or a developer who thinks the golden ratio is a fast food combo meal, Doctype has the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help make you a pretty awesome web developer. Definitely. So, we would like to remind you that Bar Camp Orlando is coming up on Saturday, April 2nd, 2011. It starts at 9 a.m. and it will be at Wall Street Plaza in downtown Orlando, just like last year. So. Hope to see you there. All right. And this is episode 50. Woo! Hooray All for right. arbitrary milestones. <laughs> uh, we don't really have anything special planned, but it's episode 50, so we thought we should sort of mark the occasion. But we, we do want to thank you guys. We are really excited that it was able to last so long, and hopefully we can just keep on moving along. But we're really excited to be at episode 50 after Definitely. over a year. So yeah. good times. Couldn't have done it without you guys. So today, I am going to show you how to use CSS3 transitions. And I'll show you how to use the CSS method in jQuery. Let's check it out. Sometimes when things change on your web page with CSS, you want to sort of animate smoothly between them. And you can do that using CSS3 transitions. So let's just jump right into it. This is what a CSS3 transition looks like. When you hover over it, it will smoothly animate between different CSS properties. Here is what the code for a CSS transition looks like. The first part here is what's called a vendor prefix. And in this episode, we're going to just focus on the WebKit vendor prefix. But if you want to make this work in other browsers, you can, of course, use Moz or O to support Firefox and Opera. I should also note that this will only work in version 4 if you're using Firefox. The next part of this is the actual transition. That's just the name of the property, transition. And then the first value is the transition property. And most of the time, you're going to want to give this the value of all, but you could also use the exact value that, or the exact property that you actually want to transition on. So for example, you could put something like opacity if you just want to transition the opacity. The next part is the transition duration, and this is usually given in seconds. In this case, I've put 0.2 seconds for the value. And the last part is the transition timing function, and again, typically this will be ease, but you can also use other timing functions like linear, and there's a whole bunch of others. Basically, the timing function will kind of define how your animation is timed when it starts, during the middle, and during the end. So here's how you actually use a transition. You put the transition on the element that you actually want to animate, and then anytime it changes, which typically that's with like a hover state or with jQuery or something like that, it will actually smoothly animate between those two things. So in this case, we'll transition font size and padding and again, here's the example that we showed before, and when you hover over it, you can see that the padding and the size of the text smoothly animates. That covers the basics of CSS3 transitions. When we come back, Jim will show you how to use the CSS method in jQuery. Listen, you need a domain name. You know it, I know it, but where are you gonna go get it? GoDaddy, that's where. If you're looking to drive viewers to your video content, then .tv domains are where it's at. .tv domains are perfect for podcasters, video bloggers, and anyone with something to say. And they're available now at GoDaddy.com. Heck, where do you think we got Doctite.tv from? So, we know you all get your domains from GoDaddy, but whose code are you gonna use? Enter the code DOCTYPE3 when you check out and save an additional 10% off your entire order. Some restrictions Apply, see site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. One of the most useful methods in jQuery is the CSS method. In fact, many of the methods available in jQuery are ultimately calling CSS in the background. It's important to be able to use the CSS method effectively to both get and set the CSS properties of your elements. 
Now there are a few different ways we can call the CSS method in jQuery, and the first way is to get a property. And in order to do that, we just call .css with the property name of the CSS property we want to get. So in our first example, this jQuery code, we get the div with the ID my div, and then we call the CSS method, and then we're passing it the string width because I want to get the CSS width of this particular element. And what that does is it'll return us a string value of the value of that CSS property. In our example, it might be 110 pixels, but it is important to notice that it will return the string value with the type of measurement, in this case, pixels. It won't return you a number. There are other methods that will get you numbers if you need to do mathematical equations on the results, but for the CSS method, you'll always get a string back. Also, if you're calling the CSS method like this on a collection of jQuery objects, it will return the CSS value for the first element in that collection. So most times it only makes sense to call it for a single item. Now one of the nice things is that jQuery is equally accepting of the two different forms of the CSS value names. For instance, in JavaScript, when we call something like margin left, we need to use the margin with a capital L left. Whereas in CSS, we would call it margin dash left. So it'll accept both of these different values. And that's a really nice thing to have. Now it's important when you're getting the CSS property that you don't use a shortcut name for a CSS property like the margin property, which defines several different margins on the top left, bottom, and right. So if we want to get a margin, we need to specifically call margin left, margin right, padding top, etc. Now the second way we can call the CSS method is to pass it both a property and a value. And this will set the property on all of the jQuery selected items. So for example, we can use the CSS method and pass it the string width as the first argument and then a value like 10 as a second argument. Now for measurements, we can either pass a number like 10 or a string with a pixel or percentage value. If you just pass a number, it'll default to pixels. Now again, jQuery doesn't care whether you pass it margin dash top or margin top with a capital T. Either one is acceptable, so whichever one you prefer to use, you can go ahead and use. And the next way I'm gonna show you to use the CSS method is to pass it a property object. Now, using the last example for setting a property, you might be tempted to do something like this, where you chain together several .css setting calls with different properties by calling .css margin on top, .css opacity, and using the chaining in order to set multiple values. But there is a way easier way to do it than this. We can pass .css and pass it a JavaScript object where the keys are the properties of the CSS we want to set and the values are the values you want to assign. So in this case, it'll assign to our my div element the margin top of 10, the opacity of 0.5, and the color green. Now an added bonus of this is because of the JavaScript object syntax, we can actually leave off the quotes on the property name so long as there's not a dash in the name. If it's a simple name like opacity or color, we can simply pass those without wrapping them in quotes. However, something like margin top is not a valid JavaScript identifier and would need to be surrounded in quotes. That is it for this week. Until next time, be sure to check us out at facebook.com slash doctype and follow at doctype TV on Twitter. And if you have a question you'd like answered on a future episode of doctype, send us an email at questions at doctype.tv. And if you subscribe via iTunes or RSS or YouTube, you'll never miss an episode of Doctype. So come on, why not? So until next Tuesday, remember that every great webpage starts with Doctype.